Welcome back, my name is Kerry, and today I'm gonna to show you some very cool affordable prefab homes. The search for the perfect balance of affordability, design, and availability continues as I sniff out the coolest prefab homes on the market. Turns out this industry is way bigger than even I knew, and there are a lot more options than I originally thought. To make matters even better, there are more companies entering the space all the time, so just when I think I've seen it all, I've barely scratched the surface. After making over 200 of these videos, I feel like I've learned a thing or two about what people are looking for, but I've also realized it is impossible to please everyone. Doesn't matter what I post, there will be pushback on price, size, hair height, design, or if I really whiff on a video, all of the above. With that being said, I think I've found something that's gonna to appeal to a lot of people because not only do these homes look cool, they're also affordable. The company I'm talking about is called Illum House and their lineup of affordable prefab homes is definitely worth a look. What I'm gonna do is tell you about the company, show you a few of their models and get into the pricing. Illum House has been in the prefab business for 10 years, constructing houses, guest houses, cafes, restaurants, and saunas. But believe it or not, I first heard about them on, of all places, Instagram. They've got a really cool lineup of homes with some great designs, but what I find most interesting about a loom house is what they're building with. These homes are built with wood. Not exactly a revolutionary idea, is it? They aren't the first company to build with wood and they certainly won't be the last. However, they are the only company that I know of that harvests their own wood. Their website says, we harvest the spruce and pine ourselves and control the drying process. We treat the wood to protect against insects. Properly dried wood ensures a house holds its original shape for decades. They go on to note that a patented key compound is used during assembly that simultaneously provides excellent rigidity and flexibility and is even able to withstand an earthquake or hurricane. I don't know what this patented key compound is, but it sounds like important stuff. What I like about the fact that they're harvesting their own wood is they should have a better handle on the cost of materials needed to build these homes. When everything went sideways in March 2020 and the cost of lumber shot to the moon, they likely didn't get hit as hard because they were getting their own. I don't know if they're getting these trees from a property they own or buying the logs from somewhere nearby, but having that under their own control likely helps with the cost of these homes. The downside is they likely can't build as many homes per year as some of the high output companies that are getting their lifts of lumber trucked in from mills, but you know what? That's okay. They have set designs for buyers to choose from or the option to design a custom home while taking into account the needs and budget of whoever's buying. They set out the payment schedule on their website and if you wanna get one of these things, you're looking at 50% to start production, 20% second stage payment after the frame is done, 20% before starting on the interior, and finally 10% after the home is installed. This company is open to people who want to book a factory visit, so if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, let me know in the comments. Enough jibber jabber, let's check out the homes. They've currently got nine models listed on the website, but today I'm starting with the smallest offered by a loom house called the Oslo at 236 square feet. First things first, I really like the exterior of this home. I think they hit it out of the park specifically with that roof line. The uneven peak on the Oslo looks extremely sharp. With that and the combination dark roof, dark sides and light wood accent ends, it's an absolute head turner. The home has a door on the side wall that enters into the living space and inside is a studio plan that seems quite functional. There is only so much you can do with a 236 square foot studio, but what we're working with is a side entrance between two windows into the living room and just like that, you're right up in this thing. Being a studio, the living room opens to the kitchen and there's room for a bed on the wall shared with the bathroom. If it were me living in the Oslo, I would opt for a hide -a bed because in a home this size using one space for multiple purposes is going to be a game changer. Across from the bed space is the kitchen which is complete with a peninsula island that could replace the need for a table. Like a lot of the studios in this size range, the bathroom is at the back end with all the essentials. Toilet, sink and shower. You know. All the usual suspects. Each and every model from a loom house is available at three different price points, standard, comfort, or premium. Depending on what you want, what you need, and the budget, they have all three options to choose from with every model available. To me, the biggest selling feature of the Oslo has to be the exterior. I think this is a very cool looking home, but we can't get caught up in the first one shown, so let's move along. 
Moving up in size just slightly, the next home I like from a loom house is the Nordic at 334 square feet. This is another great exterior. Almost everything they do has the cottage look to it that I do get requests for quite frequently since I typically feature more modern options. One thing that really stands out on the exterior of this model is the six windows on the end wall that I think look great and likely improve the feel inside the home by allowing more natural light in. A comment I get on homes featured more often than I would have ever expected is that there are too many windows. I feel like the amount of windows people are comfortable with likely depends on where they picture putting the home. If it's something that's gonna be used as an accessory dwelling with neighbors close by, I understand the reasoning. People don't wanna feel like they're in a fishbowl. The biggest difference inside the Nordic is the addition of the lofted bedroom above the bathroom, which opens up living space and makes more room for whatever else you might want to put in that area of the home. I know there are a lot of people who wouldn't buy something with a loft because they don't wanna worry about climbing up and down in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, or worse yet, a face plant off the top shelf. But if that's one of your concerns, they've got you covered with the Nordic Plus. The Nordic Plus jumps the footprint from 334 square feet to 420 square feet and makes this a one bedroom plus loft. Adding a full bedroom does make this home appealing for a wider range of people and it still looks good from the outside. My favorite model currently offered by a loom house is a new model called the Helsinki. The Helsinki has a footprint of 1000 square feet and is actually a pretty simple floor plan. What we have here is a two bedroom, one bathroom home that's separated into two distinct spaces. On the one half, you have the entire living space, including living room, dining room, and kitchen. Each half of the Helsinki is bigger than the previous entire full home, so you end up with more space in each area. For me, that makes a big difference in the kitchen and living room because that's where I spend most of my time usually crushing snacks in both areas. The other half of the home is connected with a wall and is where you'll find both bedrooms and the bathroom. Like I said, pretty straightforward plan, but I think it works well and has a unique look that would be great for certain properties. From start to finish, the build time of the Helsinki is currently listed on their website as eight months compared to two months for a lot of the other models, so a little patience is required to get your mitts on one. Before I wind this thing up, let's get to the juicy part, and that, of course, is how much. These homes are built in Latvia, but they do ship worldwide, so I will convert the prices to USD, which will be accurate at the time of posting this video. Side note, there seems to be a bit of a pocket of cool prefab home builders in that part of the world. I've seen a lot out of Estonia and Latvia lately. It's interesting. The Oslo has a base price of $29,500. The Nordic has a base price of $31,500. The Nordic Plus is $44,500 and the Helsinki is $113,300. Those prices are for their standard configuration, so keep in mind they do have higher price points for their comfort and premium configurations. Alum House is a prefab builder in Europe with a great lineup of small footprint homes. They say harvesting their own lumber is one of the reasons they're able to compete so well on affordability, and I think it's a unique feature that not many others are doing. I can't think of any. I did reach out to a loom house to try and find out how many homes they're currently building per year, but at the time of posting this video, hadn't heard anything back. I really like the look of these homes, so I'll be following along with what they're up to and posting any updates right here on my YouTube channel. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.